Hi, this is Pastor Andy Shannon, and I am glad that you're joining me for today's message, which is the power of words. It's part of our series on the book of James, and our scriptures today are from James chapter 1, verses 19 to 20, and verse 26, and then James chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. First from James chapter 1, verses 19 to 20, and verse 26. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. In James chapter 3, verses 8 to 10, we read, No human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. And James 4, verse 11 says, Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. Each week we're doing a memory verse, and our memory verse today is from James chapter 1, verse 19. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Say that with me. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. May the Lord bless you as you read his word. And I'm hoping you will read along with us in the book of James this, uh, during this sermon series. We've been looking at the advice that James, the brother of James, wrote to the Jewish Christians of his day on how to live the Christian life. And we said in the first message that it appears that the problems those early Christians dealt with are pretty much the same as the ones that we still struggle with today. One of those problems relates to our inability to control our tongue, to say things that harm and hurt rather than heal and help. 20% of the verses in the book of James are dedicated to the power of the tongue. Our memory verse, James 1.19, emphasizes that we should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. But our nature is to do just the opposite. We are slow to listen, quick to speak, and quick to get mad. If you don't believe me, just stay tuned for the political discussions that are bound to happen over the next year or so. We would be all much better off if we took James's advice and were quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Sometimes the way people who call themselves Christians engage with others around them seems to be far from Christ-like. James tells us that our faith should be reflected in how we speak to and of others. He says in 1 James uh, verse 26, those who consider themselves religious and do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Do you want a worthless faith? Of course not, and neither do I. There should be a connection between our faith and our words. There are many ways that we sin with our words, profanity, making false promises, bearing false witness, lying, gossiping, harassing, berating other people, belittling them, inciting other people to do bad things, exaggerating. That's not even to mention boasting, and I bet I could do an amazing sermon on that topic. See how easy it is to fall into this mess? It's easy for us to, to, to mess up. We need divine intervention to overcome the evil talk that threatens to undo all that we might attempt to do for our Lord. I was taught by my parents the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But it isn't true, is it? Words do hurt. There's power in words. Power for good, yes, but also power for evil. Proverbs 18 verse 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death. Proverbs, Proverbs 12 18 says, reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Words wrongly used are a weapon that can destroy. This Proverbs 15, 4 says, The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. And Proverbs 15, 1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Clearly, the words that we use matter. 
The power of words can be seen in how parents talk to their children. Some parents struggle all their lives because, or some people struggle all their lives because their parents said that they were stupid or lazy or wouldn't amount to anything or spoke other unaffirming things to them. The power of words can also be seen in how children talk to one another. I can't count the number of times the news has carried stories about a child who committed suicide or mass shootings because they were bullied at school. Teachers can also speak life and healing or crush the spirit of their students by the way they speak to them. How many marriages are wrecked because of verbal abuse from one spouse to another? Relationship expert John Gottman claims that he can predict with 90% accuracy whether a marriage will last by listening to a couple argue for three minutes. Those who are most in danger of divorce, he says, are those who use words of contempt and condemnation and criticism, words that demean the other person, instead of just communicating how they feel. And in this digital age, it's not just the words we speak, but the words that we type on social media that can be harmful as well. Adam Hamilton says, we seem to have this mindset of feeling the need to give our feedback on everything. We are hypercritical and constantly looking for someone else to do something wrong. There's a difference between constructive criticism that seeks to help and nitpicking that seeks to tear down. We've become far too fond of cancel culture. So many people today are discouraged because of the critical climate in which we live. Are you part of the problem or part of the solution? Jesus said that the second greatest commandment was that we love our neighbor as ourselves. His brother James put it this way in James 2, verse 8. If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. Love should dictate how we speak to others. Our love for God and our love for others. We use our words to show love to others. Jesus gave us the golden rule, treat others the way that you would have them treat you. Apply that to the things that you consider saying or typing on social media. Would you say this to their face? Would you want someone to speak like this to you? In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, Jesus said, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Our words are a window into our soul. What can others see in you from the way you speak? What's in your heart? In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 to 37, Jesus warns us that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, he says, and by your words you will be condemned. Ouch, that is a scary thought, isn't it? I want you to know this message is for me as much as anyone else. I confess I have a problem with my mouth. I can be critical and sarcastic, and many times I've found myself saying something unkind about someone right as they were walking into the room. Once I was pointing out the contradictory message the principal was giving when he handed out candy bars to students after map testing, the day after he announced three times loudly on the intercom that no food was allowed in our classrooms. He walked by my classroom right as I was criticizing that action. Me and my big mouth can get me into trouble. I'm glad that I don't tweet because the news is full of examples of people just like me who have lost their jobs and wish they could take back words that they had said or typed. All of us have a problem with our mouth. We are all imperfect Christians and we all need grace. What have you said in the last week that you regret? Or in what ways have your words brought pain or heartache to other people, or would have if they heard them? Has your tone of voice been harsh or hurtful? We all need grace. James recognized that this problem was universal in James 3, verse 8 to 10. He said, no human, can, no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. As we grow in Christ, he transforms us to have more light and less darkness inside us, more blessing 
spills forth and less cursing. Some say that the tongue is the most powerful muscle in the human body. Whether that's true or not, we do know the tongue is strong and it can do a lot of damage. There is power in words. They can, be, they can destroy, they can be hurtful, but they can also bless others to spread peace and joy and hope, to be expressions of God's love for others. And that's what I want to focus on now. They can build up others. They can benefit others. Paul writes this advice in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Let's say that again. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Ask yourself, who can I build up and encourage today? Chapter 4 in Ephesians begins with Paul's plea that the Christians in Ephesus live a life that is worthy of their calling. And as you read that chapter, you'll find that much of what he suggests to them has to do with their mouth and the power of their words. Words can build up and bless. They can sustain a marriage, but they can also destroy it. They can start a war, but they can also end one. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up, he said. The word, by the way, unwholesome, translated here in Greek, means rotten or putrefied. Imagine that you have a lake house, and unbeknownst to you, the power went out, and everything in your freezer or your refrigerator has been sitting there for months unattended to. Can you imagine how bad that will stink when you get there? That's what this image brings up in my mind, how unwholesome Mean, what unwholesome means. Unwholesome is speech that, that, uh, that tears down others and is merciless and unkind and uncharitable. It hurts rather than benefiting people. But we can choose to build up, up other people instead. Psychologist John Gottman says that even marriages that seem to be headed for divorce can be saved sometimes if the couple learns to reverse their pattern of talking to bless the other person, to look for positive things to say to them every day. He says, eventually, when you practice this kind of speaking, it makes its way into how you fight. You learn to fight fair. You learn to speak your feelings without demeaning the other person. And I wonder to myself, if this works for married couples, can we do this with other people that we disagree with as well? Can we seek to bless them and look for agreeable things to praise and to transform our interactions with them? Wouldn't the world be a different place? You know, there are many demoralized, discouraged people around us, and part of our mission is to give grace to these people, to build them up, to bless and encourage them. Your words are either a powerfully destructive weapon or an instrument of healing and blessing. Which will it be for you? We can use words to hurt, anger, or crush other people, or give life, healing, and calm. Why is it so hard for us to tame this tongue of ours? Because the words originate from deep within us, as Jesus said, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. You see, it's a heart problem. But God made that heart. God created us, and God can transform our hearts and train our mouths. In Psalm 141.3, the psalmist says, Please set a guard over my mouth, O Lord, and keep a watch over the door of my lips. I know it's often hard to know what to say and when to say it, but the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit will help us to be discerning. He will help us to use the right words at the right time and in the right manner for the good of others and to honor God. May we use our tongues with God's help to bring healing, not harm, to everyone we talk to. Give your tongue to Jesus, not just your heart, and let him use it every day for building others up that they might give praise to God. Let us pray, because we need God's help to do this. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have said things we should not have said, and we have been silent when we should have spoken up. Forgive us our sins and fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we might use the power of our words to heal and encourage and build others up, to show your love rather than hurt and sow discord and pain in others. Rule not only in our hearts, but rule in our lips as well, that we might honor and praise our Lord Jesus. 
For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. For those here in our church family, I'm going to be giving out a business card that has Ephesians 4.29 printed on it. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. As a reminder to take with them every day uh, of, of how important it is that we use the power of our words for good. So I encourage you to put that on your uh, refrigerator or put that uh, someplace where you'll see it every day to remind you of the power of your words. Until next time, this is Pastor Randy saying, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen.